buy any type of uh, um, wire that you might want to put an inline spinner together with. And if you buy this wire, one of the things that you're going to want to do as a first step is to put a loop at the end that's kind of tied off. In these kits that we have available in 4-H uh, that we have partnered with Project Fish out of Michigan to, to acquire, what we have found is that having this first step already done is uh, one step closer to having an inline spinner that's complete. It also allows for the parts and pieces not to slide off. So I encourage uh, you to pre-prepare these particular pieces, especially for our novice, uh, our novice 4-H sport fisher persons. In the wire itself, um, making sure that you have some sort of clipping tool. Um, this is why we have to have those safety glasses, because if we are clipping them, the metal will potentially go flying off in a direction that we may not be aware of. And uh, so making sure that we're protecting ourselves is very important. You may find that you're using a pair of pliers that has a built-in area in which something might, the metal might be clipped. Either one of these is perfectly fine uh, to use. You may want to look at smaller um, pliers that will work with youth hands. I tend to have very small hands, and so this particular plier set that I have. And you'll notice that at the very tip of it, it has um, kind of a needle, uh, needle nose piece to it um, that comes down and will help grip as we're bending um, parts of our wire. So those are some of those implements that you might want to consider having. What you have on hand, you can use it. It, it won't be a problem, um, but just giving a few tips and tricks. Now the order in which you put your inline spinner together is one that is going to be up to the youth. I'm going to suggest an order here, but please don't feel like you have to do it this way. There are lots of people who fish who also may say, hey, you shouldn't use a blue bead, you should use a red bead, an orange bead, a purple bead, or a different sized bead than the ones that I'm demonstrating here. And so um, while we're going to put it together with a blue bead, please know that you can use any size bead that you want. And um, depending on the type of fish and what they might be attracted to is the color that you're going to decide on. Let me slide those out of the way. The order, the interesting thing to think about with this order is that the wire with the circle on it at this end, this is where you're going to be hooking it onto and tying their knot in with your monofilament. The um, very end of it that you're sliding things into is actually where the hook is going to be. So that's going to be the bottom of, um, of our inline spinner. So as we're putting it on, it might, be, it might be considered sort of upside down. So thinking about it in those ways. After you've put it together, if it's something that you've figured out that your blade is backwards and won't go through the water quickly enough, uh, you can always take it apart and try again. This is something that it may not be easy the first time, but by the third or fourth time that you make your own inline spinner, it will be a much easier product to create. So as we take a look at this, um, we have lots of beads here. We have two small beads, a large plastic blue bead, and then we also have um, two large metal beads. We have what's known as a clevis, that's sort of a hor horseshoe shaped piece um, that our blade is actually going to dangle from. And uh, then we also have our other parts and pieces that we're going to put together, including our hook, which is our last stop. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the bead. And this actually is very easy for our youth to do. I find that our, um, they have smaller fingers and are much more accustomed to stringing beads and, and doing these types of activities. So I'm going to put a small bead, and then I'm going to put a, my plastic bead, and then I'm going to put another small bead. Once again, this is just a template to work from. It's not a requirement. And I'm very sorry if you can't see this very well because it is such a small bead, but I'm just sliding those onto, uh, through the hole and onto um, my line. I'm now going to add a large bead. As I add my large bead, that should go in pretty, go through pretty easily. 
Um, I'm thinking about the order, remembering that this is going to be at the top of my, um, the top of my line. And so I'm trying to capture and reflect some light with my bead before I go and get my blade that will um, start moving through the water. Um, when looking at blades, there's lots and lots of different sizes of blades. There's also blade, there are also blades that have um, texture to them. And some blades you may find that, um, that they have two holes because they might feed through. In this case, we're just using a very small blade. But in order to, um, to attach the blade, what we're going to do is we're going to have to put it th the blade through the clevis. Remember, that's sort of a horseshoe shape that has, um, that has holes that it's going to go on our line. So I'm going to attach that on there, and then I have to think about which way is this going to run through the water the best. Um, remembering that this would cup the water, and this side, might, it might slide over the water. So depending on the noise that you're trying to make and the direction that you might want to put that on. Once you have that in place, this is actually one of the more difficult steps for some of our youth. And amazingly, I slid that on pretty quickly. Um, but it's going to slide on so that that blade is dangling down. Once I have the blade on, I might want to put on another bead. And then I'm going to cap this piece off with that. And then we're going to reach the point where we're at um, the level that we want to add our hook. We're not going to just simply string our hook on. This is the moment that we need to start to bend the wire. And so this step is one that can be a little more difficult for our youth um, to do and may require a little bit more assistance. So I know this is a really thin wire here, and it, it may be a little difficult to see. But what we want to do is we kind of want to bend it so that we have almost an L shape that's taking place with it. Um, in making this L shape, this is going to allow us to begin to curve this piece around um, and to hook and to create a space for our hook to be really tied in and hooked into this wire. Pardon my pun. As we start to bend it around, we're then going to create a loop. This is probably the most difficult part for the youth. As you can see, it's, it's not always the easiest part. Some youth may want to try to, um, to bend this over and make it go parallel to it. And while you can do that, there can be a problem um, if you've bent it too close um, to slide it back through. And I have seen some individuals take the wire and run it back up through um, one piece to secure it in. We don't necessarily need to do that. If your pliers aren't working for you, feel free to move to a larger set of pliers um, to begin to bend the pieces around. Okay, let me set this down a little bit. Do this in real time. So I'm wanting to bend this around. There we go. And this one's a very messy one. So you can tell I am um, practicing like a novice. And this is what's going to happen with a lot of our youth, is that as they bend it, it's not going to be a smooth bend to make a loop. Um, they might have a little extra bend in it. And that's OK. And I think it's part of the learning process to know that it's OK for it not to be perfect. It'll work. Okay. There we go. So once we have sort of a crossed over loop, we're going to slide our hook on with the bonnet so that we don't stab ourselves with those um, very sharp pieces. And then what we want to do is we want to begin to um, wrap this piece around. Now you'll notice that on this particular piece, um, that loop is not as tight as my loop at the very top. Um, that's one that, that someone else has made and has done a superb job with. And for the first few times that you're making one of these, you may find that it's not going to look um, perfect. And I think that's something that's a good thing for youth to learn that Practice is going to help you make a better um, make a better inline spinner. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to then wrap this particular piece of the wire around being careful not to pull the hook out of the bonnet. If you do that, you will stab yourself and hook yourself. Um, we want to save the hooks for the, the fish. I'm going to spin this around. Oops. So as I spin this around, then going to start to pull this wire. And what I want to do is I want to pull the wire across. And um, this is where adults, this might be something that you can help with as you're, you're crossing these pieces and spinning them around um, and up inside of your, inside of the inline spinner. Um, you'll want it to come around several times. And so at this point, you can see that I've only spun it once. <laughs> you can see that I've only spun it once, and I also spun my bonnet off. And that's why it's very important um, to kind of keep an eye on, on those parts and pieces as you're putting it together. All right, so, so now that I have... Um, I have a hook on a small loop that I have fed it into, and then I have spun this around. The next piece that you're going to want to do is to clean it up a little bit. So you don't want these metal pieces just kind of hanging off. You want your um, spinner to be able to move up and down. So as you clip this, please be careful of flying pieces. Um, and so you'll have small pieces of metal that will clip off. This is a really basic inline spinner um, that a youth can be very proud of making, and apparently an adult can be very proud of making it as well. 